Hello, I'm Donald Leggett. Welcome to the latest London Southeast CEO interview. I'm joined again by George Bennett, CEO at Rainbow Rare Earths, who are, as you probably know, the London listed producer of rare earth metals. Rainbow are developing an exciting project to extract rare earths from old gypsum tailings in South Africa, and they also operate a pilot mine uh, in a, pi a pilot rare earths mine in Burundi. RBW have been working on a feasibility study for the Falabora project, and as part of that process, have released results of test work being undertaken. Welcome, George. How are things with you? Very good, thanks, Donald. Nice to be with you guys again. No, it's always good to always good to say hello and catch up. Okay, can I ask you for a, for a quick overview of uh, of Falabora? Tell us in just very broad brush terms what's happening there at the moment. Well, as you're aware, we only secured this project just over a year ago, November 2020. Nothing happens over December uh, in most parts of the world, uh, as happen in, happens in South Africa. And then we really started working on this thing uh, January last year, and we're a year into it. Uh, we've drilled a resource to an inferred, um, an inferred stage. And uh, we're a short way away from MNR, and we just need to drill a few more holes. We're waiting for the rainy season in South Africa to be completed. And we've been doing extensive test work and uh, metallurgical and optimization work with uh, the ANSTO laboratory in Sydney, Australia, which is probably the leading rarest laboratory in the world. And we've also been doing extensive work with KTEC in Florida who, um, as uh, your um, uh, participants or investors might know, we did a deal with KTEC last year to use their, their RP, uh, which is to extract uh, and separate rare earths from our phosphogypsum in Pelabora. Yep, we know all about uh, KTEC and we're very familiar with them. Uh, let me just take you a quick aside. Have you been encouraged yeah. by the fact that the, the price of rare earths NDPR continues to rise? And do you see that yeah. as a cyclical or is it underpinned by long-term long-term demand for rare earths? Well, yes, the current price of the rare earths that we are interested in is sitting at record highs. And this has been driven by structural demand rather than a cyclical demand. In other words, the demand for wind turbine power, electric vehicles, uh, any, any motor um, that requires permanent magnets, which requires rare earths, is a long-term trend that we are seeing. It's been driven by legislation, as we all know, um, by European, UK legislation and worldwide emission uh, standards, which are demanding more solar energy, more wind power, uh, wind turbine energy, and all of these, um, all of these um, various um, vehicles and uh, solar, so, solar power plants and wind turbine plants require um, rare earth elements in them. And very importantly, the wind, wind turbines and the electric vehicles require permanent magnets, as well as lots of other uses in drones, electric scooters, electric uh, motorbikes, everything you can think of that's uh, electric these days requires permanent magnets, including cell phones. We mustn't forget cell phones. Okay, so investors, hang on to that long-term demand. Uh, yeah. uh, back to Falabora, you've been testing an acid leaching process on the mm. gypsum stacks that we're forever talking about at Falabora. And yeah. now you're doing that with Anst Anst uh, uh, with Anst Laboratories. Anst Laboratories, well done. Yeah. So what has Anstel's work come up with? This is the time for the detail. Yeah, well, uh, in a nutshell, they basically confirmed that we can use sulfuric acid as our key reagent. Uh, to um, to start taking the rare earths out of the to dissolve the gypsum and uh, and first to leach the rare earths um, and what we known as create uh, a PLS pregnant leach solution. Now, why that's important is that sulfuric acid is really available next door to us from uh, the Palabora Mining Company, which is a copper mining company. So it's a waste stream next door, and we'll be using their waste stream to feed our plant. Uh, with sulfuric acid. They've also been able to optimize the amount of sulfuric acid that we're using. You know, we originally started with um, basically 300 grams per liter of solution. We're now down to 110 grams per liter of solution. So we basically one third of where we started. So that obviously drives CapEx and OPEX. And very importantly, we've also been able to reduce the leach time from 24 hour leach to a 12 hour leach just by adding a small amount of heat which will come via steam and uh, and and by reducing the the, um, the the resonance time in the leach tanks to 12 hours means we require smaller tanks 
and smaller downstream uh, flows, which, uh, which will then feed the KTEC process. And all of these optimizations are important because it reduces our CAPEX and our OPEX overall for the, um, for the, uh, for the flow sheet and for the Pellabora process. And, and by identifying a few other optimization uh, parameters and, and opportunities, we've now embarked on a further series of test work to try and come up with the best and optimized uh, flow sheet uh, before we complete our, our feasibility study. The reason why I want to do this is because by coming up with the best optimized flow sheet at the start, it saves us coming out with a feasibility study that we have to optimize further. This way, we will be very close to our bankable study quality uh, flow sheet, uh, which will drive uh, the, the outcome of our initial feasibility as well as the final feasibility. And um, as I said, we've got a team that's very experienced in this. Fortunately, my team and I have worked together. We've built, um, when I ran MDM Engineering, over 22 uh, mines and process plants. And we've, with clients, uh, um, we've gone through this optimization process before with metallurgical test work, um, doing trade-off studies and improving the flow sheet before we finalize the feasibility study. And we're embarking on the same process at, um, at Rainbow. Also take into account, we've come a long way. As I said, we only secured this project just over a year ago. We've got a resource we will have a finalized flow sheet within the next few months. And, you know, we will have done this in about an 18 month period compared to other projects, which will be three, four years into, into, into getting to the same stage. Yes, and, indeed. Uh, I mean, You're cracking on, George. So uh, when you apply the KTEC te technology, which you mentioned at the top of the interview, we're all familiar with KTEC technology. You apply it to that leach solution, yeah. pregnant leach solution. That's a great phrase. Uh, what yeah. rear earth grades can be achieved? Well, it's, it's not so much, we're not talking about grades because the grade is when you feed it into the plant, it's a recovery that we that uh, drives the, the economics of the project. What recoveries can we expect? And we'll end up with somewhere around 66% recoveries of the rears that we initially feed in. Uh, and, and that's the important factor is what our final recovery looks like. Right now it's circa 66%. And basically what I'm, by, by doing this optimization work with ANTS, the, we're also going to be doing further optimization and trade-offs with KTEC is to drive the, the downstream CAPEX numbers lower and the OPEX numbers lower. But very importantly, the KTEC uh, study has confirmed that we'll be able to produce separated rear earth oxides. And this is much further than most rear earth projects around the world are setting to, to achieve. In other words, they will be going to either mix rear earth concentrate like we do it uh, in Burundi, or they'll be doing a mixture with carbonate or mixture with oxides. We're going one step further. We're going to separate it with oxides, which means that we'll be able to get about 88% um, of the value of the separate, of separate rear oxide price published in China, which means that we get about 47% increase in revenue from when we originally envisage embarking on our feasibility study, which was just going to go down to a mixture of carbonates. We've now confirmed we're going to go that further, that bit further downstream, which is about a 47 to 50% 50, 50 increase in our original revenue target that we're going to get out of Palabora. We've been able to confirm with the KTEC study. So that's what you add in terms of economic value. How much, how much of that is actually baked in? Do you think that's 100% guaranteed, that 50% uh, uplift? Um, nothing's 100% guaranteed, but basically, <laughs> basically the KTEC study confirms that we'll, we will be able to produce a 99.5 to 99.9% .9 purity separated rear earth oxide, and we're very confident that we'll achieve that. And uh, we're basically confirming that with further tests with KTEC at the moment, and they're optimizing that further. So we, we expect to have our final optimization results um, out within the next few uh, three to four months, and that will enable us to finalize our feasibility study. We unfortunately are, are, are we're impacted by the COVID delays at ANSTO last year in Australia. We experienced sort of plus minus four months of delays, which obviously put our whole timetable back. But uh, now that uh, COVID um, certainly in the Western world uh, seems to be on, on the back foot and in Australia, uh, we, we expect no further delays out of Australia or out of um, Florida and the US where KTEC are doing their work. And are you happy with the overall results that have been achieved? Everything does seem to be, you know, the most important thing is that all these technologies are working. Uh, you know, there were prototypes. Is that yeah. a relief? 
It's, it's a huge relief. Um, all our test work is going in the right direction. Um, we, have, uh, we have to remove fluoride out of our solution, which, uh, which we are getting after leaching with, uh, with the sulfuric acid. But um, KTEC have got a very, very good technology to remove that fluoride. And we need to remove the fluoride because in our pregnant leach solution, if we don't remove the fluoride, it affects our rare earth recoveries. We can recover the rare earth. We want to hit that 66% recovery target. And uh, to achieve that target, as I said, we, um, we just have to remove the, the fluoride out of our pregnant leach solution. But all indications are that we are KTEC, um, as I said, they've done this before. They've worked, worked in the space for over 20 years and they're very confident that uh, this won't be a problem. So we're very happy with the results and also the progress we've made literally so far in about uh, 12 odd months, we've made huge progress. No, agreed, agreed. Okay, let me ask you a slightly cheeky question. Uh, what progress are you making with funding, plant build, permitting, all the, the various things that, that lie in the future? Um, so, what, what's, what's happening there? So fortunately, we're in a brownfield site at Palabora. It's a chemical processing site and it's a chemical processing processing facility we're putting up there. So there are already EIAs in place. And basically we will just we just need to upgrade these EIAs for our process. So so it's a brownfields EIA application is not grassroots. So that that cuts down our, our time obviously. And some of those EIA processes have started already, which will feed into the bankable study. But to to keep everything as, as fast track uh, in nature as possible, I've already started some of the, these EIA application approvals. I also want to uh, point out that um, if you look through our detailed um, uh, uh, RNS on and the technical report that we released, it's also um, we've confirmed very very low radiation levels. That means we don't fall foul of any radiation um, um, uh, levels uh, that that similar rare earth projects fall foul of. So we weigh below all of those and we don't have any radiation issues at Palabora. Um, we've, um, and also it's a very, very good ESG um, project because we are using all the acid water that sits with these stacks. We're talking hundreds of thousands of liters that are associated with these, with these waste residue stacks. We'll be, we can, uh, we can successfully neutralize that, that acid in the water, reuse that water in our process in a closed circuit, and basically we'll have to add a bit of water, what they call a potable water, which is clean water in our process, and any discharge will be very minimal and it will be totally neutralized. And we'll also be discharging our, our clean benign gypsum onto a new residue stack, making it a totally green ESG project. Okay, that's also, the, that takes a lot of boxes, the ESG boxes. Uh, can I take yeah. you to the, uh, Burundi, the pilot mine of Burundi? It's yeah. become more peripheral, I, I accept. Uh, I, are things still stalled there? Things are still stalled in Burundi on the trial mining operation, but we are hearing noises from the Burundi government that... Uh, that um, they would like mining, not only our operation, but other mining operations to restart in Burundi quite soon. And we're expecting some sort of um, invitation from the government within the next four to six weeks to go back up to Burundi and to uh, negotiate the restart of our mine, to, to renegotiate the trial mining operation resuming. Oh, that sounds great. That all sounds very positive, George. I think it is, yes, yeah. Yeah, great. Okay, final question. Uh, with a market cap today of uh, 92 million, uh, do you still see the business as undervalued? What, what would your investment summary be? What, 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 you know, if I'm looking to invest in Rainbow Rear Earths, what, what's your pitch to me? Um, we're extremely very undervalued, but um, that will be a, become apparent once one uh, gets out of feasibility studies. So I'm aware that uh, that's the catalyst for the, I think, the revaluation of our shares. But knowing what I know, I'm very, very confident that we are extremely undervalued. Um, uh, and I know we're very undervalued. When I look at other projects, real projects, when I see the work they have to do to get to where we are, and I can see the amount of capex they're going to have to spend to produce a mixed rare earth carbonate, never mind all the way down to separated rare, rare earth oxides, we're going to be follow copic, um, capex, follow opex. And um, you know, I have insight to that, and I'm very confident that we will produce a very, very um, good um, project with a very, very uh, good MPV and very high RRR when we eventually publish. So, so low, yes, low risk, high value project. Correct, yeah. Okay, George Bennett, uh, uh, CEO at Rainbow Rear uh, You are a star as always. Thank you for joining us. Um, let me give you the 
usual blurb. Uh, if you're a rainbow investor, remember to check out the RBW chat board on our website. And please do follow us on Twitter. That's at London Southeast. And if you like this interview, then Google London Southeast YouTube channel and subscribe to, to receive our video uh, content. It's a very useful thing to do. And thank you for watching. And as I say in South Africa, please go well.